Hello everyone, it's Trina here from thereisacardforthat.ca and today I'm going to be making this cute little thanks card because it's almost Thanksgiving here in Canada, like in a week, and I've done no cards. <laughs> but that really shouldn't surprise anyone. Um, today I'm actually going to be using a set from MFT, uh, the Harvest Mouse set. And this one came out last year or the year before. But every time I went to go order it, it wasn't there. So I ordered it in like February because I guess nobody's grateful for stuff in February because <laughs> they're all doing like lovey stuff. And then I totally forgot I had it until I was in Pinterest and I was like, oh, I think I have that. And I did. And so here we are. And that's how that happened. Um, so I'm going to be using a bunch of Lawn Fawn dies because I don't really have any other dies. I've got some like Spellbinder dies, but that's about it. I don't really have any other dies. <laughs> Shocking, right? Um, so I cut this circle out using a Spellbinder die. Um, a 110 pound Copic friendly cardstock and I stamped this cute little mouse using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I'm just going to be using some Distress Oxide in Tumbled Glass and Cracked Pistachio just to kind of set a little scene behind him without any actual scene stuff. It's just super simple. I'm blending on some blue, I'm blending on some some green, and uh, that's, that's about all that's going on around there. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to color in this little mouse using Copic markers. And all of the colors that I use for each part are uh, listed across the bottom. I did start out by showing you this, and then I totally forgot for the rest of the markers. <laughs> to show you what they were and also you'll notice a little bit further on that I now have some chow markers because they're a lot cheaper so why not and apparently when I go to my Michaels store where I can get my markers like I can go all the way down to the south and get like all of the markers from the thing but when I go to the Michaels store they have colors in chow that they don't carry in sketch which seems kind of weird also it's really hard to find somebody to like unlock the little case and then they like stand over you while you're trying to figure out what markers you need. <laughs> it was really uncomfortable. So I only got like six, six new markers in Chow because she was like standing over me. And then just as soon as I was done, she took off. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. Do I continue standing here until she comes back because she was watching me like a hawk the whole time? Or do I just kind of go and leave this case? open and unattended. I didn't, I really didn't know what to do. So I stood around for a little while and then I walked away. I didn't know what to do. Like she was standing over me for like five minutes and it really felt like I was wasting her time while I was trying to figure out what markers I need. And I do have that Copic app. If you don't have that and you have a lot of Copic markers, I highly recommend it because you just tap on the type of marker you have and the refill and it's there and it's fantastic. Um, but they also don't have them in any particular order. Like it goes from like E47, 58, 79, 36, like not those real numbers, obviously, but like there's no order. And then once you figure out what you actually need until you find the lady, you'll lose it again. It was a, it was a dreadful experience. Um, so I'm just going to finish coloring up the, the mouse and all of the little things in his ears. Um, I like to go with warm grays for critters. They have a little bit of a brown undertone and it just feels fuzzier <laughs> to me. I know we talked about this in another video a little while ago um, where I would use cool grays for metals or cold animals like yetis <laughs> and warm grays for warm animals like mice. So it makes sense in my head but I just think that the warm grays make him look super cute and friendly and his little cute little sweater. It's just so adorable. And this is really the only coloring that I do on this entire piece, which is really weird for me. Um, if you obviously looked at the picture at the beginning, um, it's really a different thing than I normally do. Like there's shapes to my paper and patterned paper and other things. And uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of branching out. Not sure how I feel about it yet. Like I think the card's cute. But, yeah, not entirely certain how I like this 
this new thing that I'm going through where I'm like trying all these things like, oh, I'm just going to have a little circle focus piece or I'm going to just add a banner. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed because you're going through my blog and stuff. I don't add a lot of banners. They scare me a little bit. So here I am just measuring out where I want this to be. And the pattern paper that I chose was a piece of the Knit Picky Fall Paper from Lawn Fawn. And I'm just using some Tombow Mono adhesive to glue that down and normally I don't like to use liquid glue um but I chose to use liquid glue because I felt like I was probably going to have to adjust this little circle because of the hang off um and where it goes and it was a good thing I did um what was not a good thing was like using my head and figuring out like oh I don't need to glue the entire back of this because I knew that there were going to be pieces to cut off so here I am getting glue all over my fingers and all over my glass mat and a <laughs> little bit on the front of the card but you don't really see that so that's okay um so I'm like gonna wipe this off and then wipe it on a tissue and now I have glue all over my fingers and I'm trying to cut this thing and obviously because I cut the original sound out you can't tell but I'm like holy crap, Druna, seriously, why did you not think this through? I'm like totally giving myself crap over this. And I'm like, really? It's a card. It's a card and it's cute and thing. And right there is when I noticed I didn't color the stem of the pumpkin because I'm sure a bunch of you were probably like, oh, she didn't do it. She didn't do it. Where is it? Where is it? But then I did. So everybody can like, we can all relax because I was watching this and I knew I colored the stem of the pumpkin later and I'm like stressing out over how I haven't colored the stem of the pumpkin yet. <laughs> crazy right um so the thanks is cut from brown glitter cardstock and I don't remember where I got that from I think it was like one of those pads of paper you can buy at the, the the craft store um with Lawn Fawn's thanks border die and originally I had thought that it would like just cut the bottom I don't know why I watched the videos on this and I knew how it worked <laughs> So I had like a whole quarter piece of brown underneath that was like die cut out with the same rectangle as the knit picky, knit picky paper. Yep, all for naught. I was like, oh, curses. So I'm going to trim off the edge and I had played around beforehand because um, I had done all my die cutting off camera um, about having it tucked underneath and I was like, hmm, I don't like that so much. So we went with this and then I'm just going to use some mounting tape from the dollar store and you can tell this will be like the last card that I finally use this roll on so hopefully next time when I need to use mounting tape I'll remember to like unpackage it on camera so you can see exactly what I'm talking about um so yeah same roll from the dollar store a buck for like a whole bunch of mounting tape and it's perfect because it's so much cheaper than like the 3m stuff that you can get or all of that other stuff and I'm a big fan of the dollar store don't know if you've noticed that so I'm going to remove those and then I'm going to get this centered on the front of my card. And I had thought that I was done because that was the extent of my plan. And then I was looking at it and I was like, mm, no, no, you're not. You're not even done a little bit. <laughs> like The pattern paper, it, it breaks it up. If I did this again, I would probably use a piece of that brown sparkle paper as like a layering border. So what I did was I took Lawn Fawn's stitched leaves die and I had had a piece of Bristol Smooth that was fall colored up and so I just ran that through my die cut machine a couple of times with the two smallest leaves and then I'm sprinkling them on and I don't know if I like them or where they're at or if I have too many because they only have two of the really little ones and I thought that they had another small one but a really big leaf wouldn't have worked on here I don't think. Um, so I'm just going to use a little bit more of the Tombow Mono Multi Glue um, to adhere those down just because it was out. I thought about using my other stuff or running them through the sticker maker like the Thanks die as well. Um, but this was closer. <laughs> and I'm lazy. So lazy, right? Um, so I'm just going to adhere those down. And then I'm still looking at it like, hmm, 
nope, needs some sparkle. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of the clear Wink of Stella to his cute little sweater vest, just for a little bit of sparkle, because I can't resist. I just can't help myself. Apparently a sparkle border is just not enough. And that is going to be our card for today. So thank you so much for watching and listening to me rant and rave. And please don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I will have my blog post and my Facebook page linked below. Have a great day. Bye.